Hey, I'm Sam. Welcome to Brickwall Pictures. Today I'm doing a Quentin Depew tier list. I just put out a Quentin Depew uh, video essay, and I recommend giving that a watch first if you didn't already check it out. Talk about a lot of his work in uh, in that video essay already. Now I'm going to be talking about his, the entirety of his work in more of an off-the-cuff manner. Tier list videos aren't scripted, whereas the video essays are. But yeah, I have his entire body of work here as far as filmmaking goes. I'm not going to rank his uh, music, though I do talk about his music a little bit in that video essay, and I'm a huge fan of it. I became a huge fan of Monsieur Oiseau long before I had ever heard of uh, Quentin Depew, the writer-director. And of course, his music is well utilized throughout his filmography. His movies here are in a randomized order, but first up is Rubber, which was the first of his movies that I had seen. I saw Rubber in the theater as part of this, like, Friday Night Extreme series that this one uh, little art house theater was doing. Rubber was part of that. I actually have the Rubber poster. Is this in a frame? Right, right here. I got that po poster in the wall. I think I, have, I think I have two of them, actually, but only one's in frame. You don't get to see the other one. Uh, Rubber's movie, I like a whole lot. The premise sounds dumb as hell. I'm not going to act like it's, you know, an intelligent sounding premise, but the stupidity of the premise is the point, and it, it uses that stupidity and what draws people to that stupidity as part of its thematic exploration within the film. Rubber is a much smarter movie than it appears like from the outside when you hear it's a movie about a, a tire that rolls through the desert and blows stuff up with its mind. It's a movie about nothing, which is a theme that Depew has explored more than once, uh, including in his aptly titled non-film, which I'll be getting to a little bit later on in the list. Uh, Rubber is certainly not for everybody, which can be said about his entire filmography, so I'll just say that up front. His entire filmography is not for everybody. For me, his style works so well. I love his sense of humor and his sense of surrealism. Rubber was a great introduction to his work. Uh, it's one of his English language films. Lately, he's gone back to uh, France to continue his filmmaking career in his native language. I'll mention real quick, he does have two new movies that both came out this year. Uh, one is called Incredible But True, and the other is called uh, Smoking Makes You Cough, I think. <laughs> Smoking Causes Coughing is the actual title. Anyway, so he has two new movies out this year. Um, I tried to track them down. They are not available to watch, at least in the U.S. I don't know if they're available to watch anywhere. They might be doing like the festival circuit or whatever. I know Incredible But True has been getting some uh, reviews from the festival circuit and whatnot, some early screening reviews, but it's not available to watch. I searched high and low for it everywhere. Uh, I was able to find his most recent film that's available in the U.S., which is Mandibles, and I watched that just a couple days ago, actually, before making this video. And yeah, that's his most recent one that is available to me. So I do have his entire body of work as it is available at the moment. Those other two movies aren't available. Uh, Rubber, great introduction to the world of Depew, to his sensibilities, comedic and surrealistic. I think I would put it in B. It's a good introduction, but I feel like he handles his themes a little more deftly in other areas. Okay, next up is Being Flat. This one is a short film. Uh, it's almost a music video, but not quite. It does have some more like uh, narrative elements. It's basically a promo, like a music promo for uh, some Monsieur Wazo material. It's got Flat Eric, his uh, his icon, who is uh, I'm not wearing it right now, but that's the flat that's on my hat is for Flat Eric. Also on the back of my laptop here is a little that's a little Flat Eric if you can't tell. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Flat Eric is is in this short film as is. Uh, that one actor whose name I don't know, but he was in Rubber, and I believe he was in Wrong Cops as well, maybe in Wrong as well. well I think he might be in all of uh, Depew's English language movies. Um, but he's in there playing Monsieur Oiseau, which is a thing he's done a couple times. Monsieur uh, Quentin Depew has had people play him in his movies. It's always really funny. Um, the funniest is in the Making Lay. The Making Lamb's Anger one, where he's played by uh, just this random woman who is a terrible actress and he's fully aware of how bad she is. It's so funny, but we'll be talking more about that later on. Uh, so Being Flat is mostly a music video promo, but it's just so entertaining. There's like a funny bit with sausages and whatnot. And who do you think you are banning sausages from the stage, huh? Well, guess what? Guess what? I had one in my pocket the entire time! But then the, the real bulk of it is, uh, it's like they're holding auditions for someone to play Flat Eric. So it's a series of people in these like janky Flat Eric costumes 
dancing to Monsieur Wazo music. Incredibly entertaining. It's obviously really simple and straightforward, though. For how, like, you know, simple and nothing it is, I don't know if I can go above a B, just because it's, you know, it, it is, it's not going for a whole lot, but it is, it nails what it's trying to do perfectly. If you're kind of new to the channel, I try to be a little more restrictive. I want to give the really top tiers because I want that to mean something. Next up is steak. Uh, steak is what I only saw recently because it's kind of hard to find in the U.S. I eventually found it on uh, YouTube. I don't know if that'll stay up or if it'll get taken out for copyright or whatever, but it's very hard to find otherwise. Um, this was Depew's first feature film. Um, and I would say, I guess it does kind of feel like that in some ways, but it's also very much his voice. He came out of the gates swinging with his particular brand of humor and brand of, uh, it's a little less surreal than some of his other works. But the thing is, it's a little less surreal, but it's no less weird. It's super fucking bizarre. Cheevers, Cheevers forever. <laughs> Cheevers. 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 This one is, it's one of his funniest. It has a little less going on, perhaps, in terms of like thought provoking surrealism and whatnot. It is so funny though. I was just laughing constantly throughout the entire watch. There was hardly like, I don't think a single scene went by where I wasn't like laughing hysterically to, to myself. It is so funny. Um, I love the cast. The main two guys are both so funny. One of them is a guy who has been in other uh, Depew movies. Like he was in Wrong Cops. He was the um, Cyclops guy. And he was in Wrong as, um, I think he was like the gardener or who or whatever. I, I just, I love the spirit of this movie. It has this real rebellious, chaotic energy to it. There are things in this movie that have like no purpose being in the movie. And I kind of love that about it. It sounds like that's a problem, but it just makes me enjoy the movie so much more. Like there's this little sequence where, um, where the main guy, he gets his bike back. <laughs> And it has like no bearing on the plot whatsoever, but it has such an energy to it with the music that's playing and the way it's edited and kind of like a, um, like lots of, lots of jump cuts, lots of, lots of, you know, fast paced kind of cutting. It's so fun, even though it has no bearing on the rest of the movie. I love how thoroughly it commits to its shtick with the whole Cheevers thing and the, the their secret handshake and stuff, which like the, you know, the secret handshake thing is like one of those comedy tropes that usually annoys me in movies because it's so tired. Somehow steak is like the funniest I've ever seen it done. No. No. Clack. No. Regarde. Clack. 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 Pardon. Oh. Bon, on va pas te montrer ça tous les jours. J'ai capté en fait. Regarde. Hey. Shivers. Regarde. Hey, clack, shiver. Yeah, I love all the little idiosyncrasies of them, of like they all drive the same truck, they all wear the, the jackets and the, the, the boots and everything. The weird game that they play, the fact that they're constantly just swilling milk. So funny and, and you know, bizarre. Oh man, it's, it's just so funny. There's so many like iconic moments in this and I want to rewatch it already, even though I watched it like a week ago. It, it's kind of messy in some regards, so I can't give it like S because I try to hold S for like movies that are like, you know, almost like perfect works of art. This is, this is an A. I think it is so funny. Someone could watch this and just completely not jive with the humor because the Pew's sense of humor is really particular, I think. And it just really speaks to like my personal sensibilities, I feel. So if someone watched this and like didn't laugh a single time, I would not even be surprised. I would just be like, yeah, fair play. It, his style really works for me. I find it so funny. Next up is non-film. Now this is actually, a self-admitted failure of Depew. This was his first attempt at making a movie. He had already been uh, doing his Monsieur Wazo stuff for a while. This was his first attempt at making a movie. It's not quite a movie. It is a non-film, but in, in like more ways than one because the length, it's only about like 40 minutes long. It didn't quite reach feature length, even though I believe it was intended to. It just didn't quite get there. And all of Depew's movies are kind of short. His longest movie is only like 95 minutes or whatever. And a lot of them are closer to like 80 minutes. Um, to keep an eye out, it's only like an hour long, <laughs> even though it's technically a feature. I think it's, 
an hour 15 or whatever when you count the credits, but like the actual movie is like an hour. Anyway, he definitely keeps him tight. He gets in there, he does what he wants to do and he gets out, he doesn't linger around, which I appreciate, especially in this current uh, mode of filmmaking that seems to be dominant right now where people are prioritizing really long movies like the Batman being three hours and the Snyder Cut being four hours or whatever. Uh, Don't Look Up being two hours and 40 minutes or whatever for like no reason. So in a world where we're constantly getting these really long, unnecessarily long kind of bloated movies, DePew's films are a good little antidote to that because they're they're quick and they're snappy and you get in and you get out. If you want to watch an on film, it's extremely hard to find and it took me a very long time to find it. And then I eventually discovered that Quentin DePew has a Vimeo page, his own personal Vimeo page where he just uploaded uh, non-film. So you can find it on Vimeo. It's his page. It's not even like a bootleg or whatever. It's his upload. The picture quality is still very low. Um, and he wrote this in his uh, description. Th these are his words. Non-film is unwatchable. Non-film is my first attempt to make a movie. Failed. Non-film is the essence of no reason. Non-film is rubber's handicapped brother. Non-film is a wild animal. Non-film contains only one joke. Non-film has been shot with Flat Eric's money. Non-film is great if you know how to watch it. Try. And then it also says, poorly translated, sorry. Because <laughs> I think the, uh, the subtitles might not be 100% accurate. Um, so yeah, it's a self-admitted uh, failure. Now, it, it isn't completely worthless. I would say it's still worth the watch, but only if you're already a fan of his other movies. Definitely do not start with it. With some filmmakers, you want to start with their first movie and see their origins. Depew, do not start with them. If you start with this, you're probably going to be turned off the rest of his movies. Um, if you're looking for one to start with, I'll probably say Deerskin. Now, non-film is interesting in that um, it's made with, uh, it doesn't really have any music, though it does feature a lot of musicians. So um, the star of the movie, or one of the stars anyway, one of the leads, is Sebastian Tellier, who is another French musician. Who, he makes really great music too, by the way, if you're not familiar. Um, I especially love his soundtrack to the movie Narco, which I have not seen. I just listen to his soundtrack a lot, and it's excellent. Um, anyway, Sebastian Tellier is one of the main actors in this. He's also in Stake, um, as is Sebastian Akchote, who's also just known as Sebastian with the, the capital A as the, you know, that guy who also makes great music. Or I, I, at least I liked his older stuff more. His, his more recent album has some good songs on it, but kind of took a step in the wrong direction. Now I'm just talking about French music. I think Wazo just kind of brought in his, like, French music buddies. A lot of them are on like the Ed Banger label and stuff. And, you know, I think they're just friends and he got, got them in the movie. They're not really actors otherwise. Um, anyway, so non-film, not a good place to start. It's not good, I wouldn't say, but it does have some interesting things going for it. There's some interesting recursion things. The idea is that um, a guy wakes up on a film set and he's apparently the star of the movie, but he has no memory of like being in the movie and he doesn't know there's a movie going on. So that's interesting to start off with. But then it just kind of meanders around. There's not a lot to it. Um, there are a couple of really funny moments, but they're so few and far between. Kind of like he said in his Vimeo thing, it has only one joke. I would say it has like two jokes actually, but whatever. There's one really funny joke where a guy gets shot and he uses... Um, film, like 16 millimeter film as a tourniquet. I burst out laughing at that. And then the other joke is just a really simple kind of physical comedy thing where there's a woman scooping like uh, beans or something onto plates for people. And she's like going down the line, plate, plate, plate. And then one guy's reading the script and she just puts it in the middle of the script. It's like a classic kind of like old school slapstick comedy gag, but it's still funny. Other than that, there really aren't any jokes, but there is plenty of surrealism and weirdness. It's very slow and it's not like enjoyable to watch. It's honestly a little hard to watch the way it's shot and the way it's presented, but there is something really interesting about the way it um, kind of, I was gonna say evolves, but it's more like, a, 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 more like devolves. The, the film crew goes out into the desert. One of them fires a gun as like part of the movie and it's loaded with real bullets and they kill like almost the entire crew. And, but then they decide to just keep shooting the movie. And where it gets really surreal in an interesting way is when they decide to shoot the movie without a camera. <laughs> so they go out into the desert and they're like setting up shots and scenes, but they don't have a camera. They're just like doing the scene and they're talking about how they need to like clear the background and stuff. And there's something really interesting about it, but it's like, it's not quite presented in, in a way that works as far as like a movie goes. It's, it's like interesting and thought provoking, but it's not at all engaging on a movie level. 
the the camera work it's all shot like from the hip it feels like the camera's it, it, it looks like the camera operator is like either two feet tall i think it's Depew himself and he must have been holding the camera like literally like against his hip and it's constantly like bumping into the actors <laughs> The camera, there's no like shots behind the camera, just kind of like moving around. And it, it, he's constantly like banging into the actors, like seemingly by accident. And you can like hear the cam ops, like footsteps and stuff. It's, you've never seen a movie shot like this, and that's not a good thing. It's bad. It's worth a watch if you're a fan of his movies and you've seen this other stuff. But as a actual like work, especially since it's a self admitted failure by the filmmaker, I'm going to give it an, an E. It's not, well, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go D actually. Because there are some interesting moments. There's some interesting ideas, and there are a couple of funny moments, so I don't think it's completely worthless. Um, okay, next up is To Keep an Eye Out, which is one of his most accessible movies. Um, it might be his flat-out most accessible. It kind of feels like a stage play at points, because a lot of it takes place in one location, in like a police station. It's a little bit less surreal than some of his other works, but it does do really interesting things with the idea of flashbacks. It's kind of like all of the surrealism, and kind of like the purpose of the movie is to explore what a flashback is within the medium of film. And it does some really interesting things with that. It's also hilarious. It's just like a straight up comedy, whereas something like Rubber, the humor, often comes from like a, a kind of meta place. Within Keep an Eye Out, it's just like there are jokes and it's a straight up comedy. Um, also, the two actors are both really good. Um, one of them is also the star of Mandibles, and the other guy is Benoit Pol Polvudra. <laughs> I know, Polvador, Benoit Polvador. I'm sure that's not how it's pronounced. But anyway, he's the star of Man Bites Dog from back in uh, 92, I think, that Belgian movie. Uh, Man Bites Dog is excellent. It's a, one of the most harrowing uh, like found footage movies you'll see. It's, it's a mockumentary about a serial killer, and it's presented with like the utmost realism, and he plays the serial killer. It's, it's pretty disturbing. Good movie. Anyway... Good actor, and he, he's, he's great, and this is very funny and over the top. Keep it out, is very um, accessible. I think it's another B. Um, one of the things about the back is just its length. Like I said, it's like an hour long. It's, it's pretty quick. It, it breezes right by. Okay, next up I'm going to grab Wrong. Wrong is interesting. It's one that I would like to rewatch because it's, it's been a while since I saw this one, but I didn't have a chance to rewatch it for this uh, tier list. So I, I so I'd like to rewatch it. Um, it's heavily surreal. It actually might be his, his most surreal work um, altogether. It's bizarre. It's very funny in a very dry kind of way. Um, the acting is all over the place. Some of the performances aren't very good. Some of them are great, though. Uh, William Fitchner, who's a character actor you'll probably recognize even if you don't know his name. Um, he is incredible in this movie. The dude invented a new like cadence of speaking for the role, and it's, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, um, I want a movie that just starts his character. Um, I'm going to give it a B again. B is very good, by the way. I don't know if uh, some people might see... Like, a B is a strong movie. Um, I would, like, anything D and up is a recommendation for me. D is, like, has issues, but still worth watching. E and F are the only ones where I'm like, don't watch. I'm just to set my, like, rating scale in place. Like, for me to get an S, it has to be, like, nearly perfect, you know? I don't give out a lot of S's. And I don't give out that many A's either. You gotta be really, like, tip-top, like, 9 out of 10 kind of you know, strong eight to get a, to get an A. Wrong Cops is up next. Wrong Cops is probably his most, like, juvenile. It's very vulgar, but it's also uh, his most musical. It has the most Monsieur Wazo music out of any of his movies, I think. Oh, I didn't mention the soundtrack in Steak. It's fucking great. It's him with the two Sebastians, Tellier and, you know, capital A, Sebastian. Um, and they, they make a great team. Very distinctive style. It doesn't exactly sound like any of their styles as an individual it really does feel like something new and it's good for that reason but anyway back to wrong cops lots of monsieur wazo music in wrong cops there's another one of his american productions it has a full uh, hollywood cast except for brings a couple of his french buddies along it's extremely funny i find it so funny but again like steak it's a movie where if you watched it and you were like i don't get this type of humor whatsoever i would not be surprised um it's a very particular type of humor. I find it so funny. One of the characters, the guy who was in Steak, is a cop who's like a cyclops. He has like this deformed head and <laughs> wears an eye patch. And his, his whole thing is he doesn't really want to be a cop. He wants to be, he wants to be Monsieur Wazo, basically. He is making Monsieur Wazo's 
uh, music. Like he's making that like really heavy techno kind of electronic music. And I love the kind of like self-deprecating side of Monsieur Wazo, where he basically just like calls, he, everyone just tells him the music is awful, that it's hor horrible. And it's just straight up like his own music that he actually is successful with. It's decidedly lowbrow and it's not really going for anything other than being extremely entertaining. Uh, and I think that's another B. Okay, next up is reality. Uh, I said wrong was his most surreal. It is either wrong or it's reality. These are the two that are the most surreal for sure. Reality gets a little uh, Lynchian in places, um, but it's, it also, it always keeps a foot firmly planted in comedy. It's very, very funny all throughout. My favorite joke in this one actually involves uh, Eric Wareheim of Tim and Eric fame. He's in this. And it's just like him describing a dream he had. Yes. Are you the old person that lives in this house? Yes. Why should I give a shit? It's like, and then I woke up, that was the end of the dream. I, I just find that so funny. I think about that joke, if you can even call it a joke, I don't think it technically counts as a joke, but I think about that funny moment semi-regularly and it makes me crack up every time so it does a lot good but reality is also doing more reality does enough to elevate it from b all the way to a i think because it's doing some things a little bit extra it's pushing the surrealism into some more artistic areas it's staying very funny but it's going above that lowbrow into some real like thought-provoking areas just a little bit. It still stays like crass and, and funny all throughout. Um, but the premise is really interesting. It's basically there's this uh, sound recording guy. He's tasked with capturing a recording of a scream of pain that is that will win an Oscar. <laughs> it's like an impossible task kind of thing, like a Sisyphusian, Sisyphian, Sisyphian, wow, whatever. There's a pig that eats like a blue VHS tape. <laughs> I can't even... Describing this, it sounds like it's, I'm just, you know, it sounds like an AI stringing random words together. So anyway, good movie. Next up, I'm going to grab this one here. This random image, which doesn't really look like uh, anything. This is a placeholder for Das Photo Shoot, because I don't think it has a poster. This is one of his short films. It's only a couple minutes long. Um, this was probably one of his weakest works for me. It might just be because it stars uh, Marilyn Manson, who's a total gross creep, so I couldn't get on board with it. I don't think Depew knew about... Uh, Marilyn Manson's like crimes and stuff. I don't think the allegations had come out yet at that point. So, you know, whatever. I mean, we'll find out, I guess, if they work together again in the future, but they haven't in a long time and I don't think they will. But regardless, even if um, even if I was unaware of the, you know, allegations and stuff, Marilyn Manson's just a dog shit actor. Like he cannot fucking act. He single-handedly ruins this uh, short film. Like forget the fact that he's a, a gross creep, right? He's just an awful actor and he sucks the joy out of what would otherwise be pretty funny, a pretty funny little short. His delivery just kills the humor. There's one joke in it that still kind of works because it isn't dependent on his delivery. And it's when um, they're like, it's just about a guy taking a photo shoot. It's very, it's only like two or three minutes long or whatever. The one little gag that works because it's not Manson delivering it vocally is at the start of the photo shoot, he goes to get the camera. It's to take it out of like a camera case. He pulls it out of like a bucket of ice water as if that's how like you store a camera when not in use. That's funny to me. Um, and it didn't involve Manson doing anything. So that's why that one joke kind of works. Otherwise he just kills the fucking humor. Um, I'm gonna give this one an F. Anyway, next up is Mandibles, which is his most recent movie that is available to watch in the US. This one is almost a straight laced comedy, but then it adds in the batshit crazy surreal element, just the one element, which is the very premise of there's this humongous fly, like a gigantic, you know, dog-sized fly that these two dummies try to train because they think that uh, if they train the fly that they can get it to go like rob a bank and bring the money back to them. It's really funny. The two characters are, they have great chemistry. They're both so, they're both so dumb. Oftentimes, when you have like a really stupid character, you pair them up with a straight man to like play off of each other. This somehow works when they take two stupid motherfuckers and they put them together and they're really funny together. They balance each other out well. And they're both, they're both good performances. They really get 
what Depew is going for. Um, there's also Adele Exarchopoulos, or however you say her name, from uh, Blue is the Warmest Color fame. She's in this. She's a bigger name than Depew uh, often works with. Uh, she's not like a main character. Though. It's mostly just these two guys for the whole movie. And then in the third act, they kind of go to a second location, and then the rest of the movie kind of takes place there. Or not even the rest, but the, the next like act and we takes place there. And that's where all these other characters are that are on the poster. It's mostly just these two guys and a fly <laughs> for the whole movie. It's very entertaining. It's pretty straightforward. It does have some other kind of surrealistic elements, like some Louis Bunuel kind of stuff, where like when they go to this other location, one of the characters is a woman who was in a ski accident and now she can't control her volume, so she screams every line. So that's a bit of a surreal element. That got a little grating after a while, but they do still some really funny stuff with her character. I liked uh, like where her character <laughs> went and like when the fly eats a dog and stuff, and that's very funny. The CG actually looks pretty good. The first time they showed the fly, I was like, oh, that doesn't look very good. But then every time after that, it looked pretty good. I, something about the first shot, it just didn't look right. The lighting was like a little off. It was a little too bright or something. But after that, it looked good and they do a good job of like selling it in the environment. Like the fly will like tug on a bed sheet or whatever and you'll see the actual bed sheet move and that kind of sells that oh it is really in that environment to do a good job with that kind of stuff it, it's simple but it's like it's one of those things that could kind of make or break it since there is a fully cg character that is in like almost the entire movie but yeah very funny i think it's another uh b okay next up is uh, this is the album art for his album uh lamb's anger this is i'm not actually ranking lamb's anger this is a placeholder for one of his short films that i don't think has a poster it's called making lamb's anger it's like a behind the scenes of the making of the album but it's you know behind the scenes it's completely fake it's a little short film it's it's another surreal comedy thing it's actually this is one of his most sur surreal works actually it is so bizarre this is a beginning of a Okay, this is the beginning of a very short reportage on Mr. Owasso, but I'm quite excited, but I'm quite excited, but I'm quite excited. Okay, <clears throat> let's start. Action. Hi, this is the beginning of a very short reportage on Mr. Owasso, an underground musician. I'm not sure why I'm doing this yet, but I'm quite excited about doing it. Monsieur Oiseau is the star of the short film, but it's not Monsieur Oiseau, but it's not Quentin Depew playing Monsieur Oiseau, it's this woman who is a, an awful actor playing Monsieur Oiseau. So I was sitting here, right here in this very spot, which I do every day, this is where I record all my demos, and I think it was like 7 o'clock p.m. and I just finished eating a cup of yogurt, and it was really easy, and here, I, I guess I'll just show you. Depew knows how bad of an actor she is, and I think she even knows how bad of an actor she is. Like, every every line reading is, like, purposefully as awkward as possible. You mean the CD player works? No, I mean the music works really well in a car. In a parked car, particularly. I think the best way to appreciate my CD is in a car while stopped. You might want to put that in your film. <laughs> See, it works really, really well. And then the other character is this guy who's like interviewing her and he's wearing a police uniform for no reason, which is just funny on its own. This thing, it's just like a fake behind the scenes and the purpose of it is just to promote his Lamb's Anger album. It's basically like the most effective promotional uh, video I've ever seen because it's a hilarious short film, even if you don't ever watch or even if you don't ever listen to his album. It is so funny on its own. There's great moments, like, I mean, I'll put a couple of clips in, but like, when she's pouring the yogurt on, on the keyboard and stuff. All of a sudden, I somehow spilled the yogurt over the keyboard. And that's when it happened. That's when I had my vision. I mean, look how good the synthesizer sounds poured with yogurt. In the ending where she goes, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you something? Sure. Uh, it's really good. Again, because it's so short and simple, I can't go above a B, but like it nails what it's trying to do. 
It doesn't look very good, by the way. Like, it, it looks kind of ugly. So, you know, if, if you need something to look glossy, this will not give it to you. But anyway, it, it looks... It looks bad, but it's hilarious. And it's incredibly inventive. It's a unique way to sell an album. I also love that, like, when they're going through CDs, it's like the CD holder. It's like slices of, like, uh, like bologna or what's in the other CD slots. It's just weird and, and funny. I don't know. It works for me. Okay, and last up we have Deer Skin. Um, Deer Skin is, like I mentioned in my video essay, I was hoping it would break through to a larger audience because... It has uh, Jean Dujardin, who's a big star. You know, Oscar winner, star of uh, The Artist, one of those international acclaim. And he's an even bigger star in, in France than he is in the U.S. There's another French language film, by the way. So I was hoping having Jean Dujardin, a bigger star than Depew usually works with, I was hoping that would bring more people in. I don't think that was all that successful. It seemed to still pretty much fly under the radar. Now, it was on um, HBO Max at one point. So I'm hoping to be able to saw it there, but I don't know. I haven't heard any, I haven't heard anybody talk about it or whatever. I think it's excellent. I watched it right away. It's actually why I signed up for HBO Max in the first place because I saw Deer Skin was on there. I doubt they saw a big surge of subscribers for Deer Skin, but that's what got me on board. It has a brilliant premise, and I love that it's the kind of premise that not a single other person would ever conceive of and follow through on and make a movie of in a million years. The premise is Jean de Jardin plays a guy who gets a, a cool deer skin jacket and that his mission is to eliminate every other jacket in the world so that he can be the only one wearing a cool jacket. <laughs> it's such a brilliant premise. And at first he starts by just like paying people to get their jackets and he starts stealing them and then like burning, or no, he doesn't burn them, he buries them in a hole, which is hilarious. And then it eventually becomes murder. He just seeks out, he just starts serial killing people wearing jackets. <laughs> It's a very specific M.O. It turns into a slasher movie. Deer Skin is like kind of a horror movie. It's very funny, um, but I'd say it's like kind of a different type of humor. It's a little darker and even a little more dry than those other movies. It ha it features one of the most creative like slasher weapons I've ever seen. Instead of using a knife, what he does is he takes a fan blade out of a ceiling fan and then he drives his car really fast down the highway while holding the fan blade against the asphalt to like sharpen it. I think that's brilliant. That is an incredibly creative movie weapon. And then he goes around like stabbing people with this long fan blade that's basically like a, you know, humongous sword at that point. It's a lot of fun. The ending is also brilliant. He keeps like accruing more and more deerskin stuff, like deerskin gloves and whatnot. He kind of like turns into a deer almost in like a figurative kind of way. Again, though, it's very short. This is a short movie. It's closer to an hour than it, than it is to an hour and a half, like a, like a normal movie. Um, I think it's great. I think this one also earns the bump up to the A tier. And yeah, I think that's where I rank his movies. I'm a huge fan of the guy. I would hazard to guess that I enjoy his movies more than probably most people who would watch this video. Maybe not, though. Maybe this will find a kinship with other Depew fans, other Monsieur Wazo fans. Uh, but anyway, that's where I rank his movies. We've got three in the A, a whole bunch in the B, which are all, you know, strong, great movies. You can check out my other tier lists in this playlist. You can check out my video essays, and you can subscribe right here to check out more of the stuff I do in the future. See you next time. So long.